World AIDS Museum and Educational Center. My name is Gina Granado Hasek. I was raised in Westchester, Illinois. I've been in Florida about 18 years. I was diagnosed in 91. I found out that I had HIV through a medical insurance company that I had um, requested their services and they came to the house, they gave me a mini, mini physical. In that physical, they tested me for HIV. I didn't know that they did this. And after a couple of months of not hearing from them, I called the company and they said they're rejecting my services. I asked why. And they said because um, of my, they said it was because of my physical. And they wouldn't give me any information over the phone about that. They said I have to have the results submitted to a doctor and that that doctor would tell me what was wrong with my physical. Two days before I um, went to get the uh, results from the doctor, I found out I was pregnant. So in my mind, I thought I'm not getting um, this insurance, um, medical insurance, because I'm pregnant. But when I went to see the doctor, um, basically he walked into the office, no eye contact, shoved a, car, uh, a chart in front of my face, and said, this is what you have. And then I couldn't read it, and I asked the doctor, could you please tell me what this says? And he says, uh, and he said, it says you have HIV. I didn't know what that was. And I asked him, I said, doctor, what does this mean? And his, um, his definition was that you have what Magic Johnson has. And that week, Magic Johnson just came out, and all I knew in my head was, this guy is gonna die and so am I. And the other thing that was running, racing through my head is this doctor doesn't know that I'm pregnant. So I told the doctor that I am pregnant and he gave me a card of an ob gyne um, high-risk um, pregnancy doctor at Northwestern Illinois. Her name is Dr. Pat Garcia. And I had an appointment to go see her. So in the meantime, I had to go home and tell my boyfriend at the time that the doctor said that I'm HIV and that I, ha I am pregnant. We got him tested right away. He turned out to be negative. It was devastating for both of us. And actually, I told him that um, go on with your life. I will handle this. I will take care of the baby, and he didn't want that. He said, no, I'm going to be by your side. My first appointment with this um, doctor, um, she walked in the office, and basically I said, I don't know if I'm having this baby because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to deliver a dead baby. That's what I thought was going to happen. And she said, do you know what HIV is? And I said, no. And she sat down, and she explained to me what HIV was. In the same, um, and at the same time, she also introduced me um, in kind of trying to give me hope that she introduced me to three trials that were out at the time. And I chose one of the trials, 076, um, which was you take a, a placebo or AZT in the last trimester of your pregnancy, and then your child, when it's born, takes it for six weeks whatever I'm taking. At the time, nobody knew what I was taking. Not my doctor, not um, just the pharmacy. And I did some investigating at the time and I called Washington DC and asked questions about this trial. And basically they said, well, you and 400 and something other women were chosen, uh, uh, are in this trial. And I was the first one in Chicago. So that made me a little nervous <laughs> being the first one, but it was also encouraging because um, I thought being in this trial was going to help prevent my child from getting HIV. So anyways, I was um, very heavily monitored and at the same time trying to educate myself as much as I could and volunteering at Chicago Women's AIDS Project and all over Chicago. And I learned um, that people didn't understand that this could happen to them. My first presentation that I did, I did a safer sex presentation at a, um, a drug rehab. And I remember my partner started to talk and the people were staring at me 
and um and i you know they said why is she here and i said because i have hiv and they said you can't have hiv you're young you're beautiful and you're pregnant and you have hiv that's when a light bulb went off and i said i have to educate as much as i can these people have to know know i was i'm that i'm straight i'm not an iv drug user and i wasn't prostituting and it happened to me so it could happen to anybody my partner and i went to my parents house and i come from an italian colombian background my father being italian we sat down with my parents and we told them that i'm hiv and pregnant now you have to remember this is almost about 23 years ago and just like me they had no clue what hiv was so my father the first instinct for him was to choke my boyfriend and tell him that he had to marry me because i was pregnant and he it was a big deal that i was pregnant not so big deal that i was hiv because they didn't know what it was so little by little i had to educate them by talking to them by having them read pamphlets on this um, because they knew i was out there educating people and it was hard on them at first they didn't understand why i wanted to share my story with the world but after a while they you know they kind of calmed down and they understood what my mission was and on july 17th of 1992 um in the room when i was giving birth was about six doctors and they were everything that came out of me <laughs> went into tupperware because they needed to study this for the trial so um uh when Abid was born and he had to go on the medication that i was on for six weeks it wasn't until he was um 18 months uh that i found out that he was negative after the pregnancy i was out there with the media i was on every channel of, uh, in chicago i was um I was in a commercial, I was on Christina, I was on Oprah, I was a speaker for the AIDS Walk, I was on billboards, and so I was really out there. And then I got married to his father, uh, Juan's father, and then he decided we should move to Colombia, South America. So we went, and it killed me because I couldn't talk about this there. It, you know, this is a long time ago, and we couldn't talk about this in Colombia. So. I needed to do something with this energy that I had. Um, so what I decided was to investigate a little bit and I found there was an orphanage of children who have AIDS that their parents abandoned them. And basically I would go and change them and hold them and feed them. I made a big Christmas party for them, had all my friends wrap up toys and bring it over there for Christmas. We had the guitars, we had Santa Claus, we had food. So I did my, uh, myself to um, going to this orphanage, which by the way, no taxi wanted to take me there because they wanted to pretty much bomb this orphanage because it was children's, uh, children who had AIDS there. I would fly back and forth to Miami every three months, see a doctor, get my meds, and go back to Columbia every three months. And this was about two and a half, three years. Then I went, uh, then I got a divorce and I moved to Miami and I was a single mom uh, for many years. I started working for what is called the Pet Center in Miami Beach. It's Prevention, Education, and Treatment Center. It was a clinic for people who have AIDS and HIV. I was a peer counselor. Um, this was the best job I ever had because uh, I got to educate clients. I got to basically hold their hand right after the, their diagnosis Many times I took these people home with me because I was so afraid that they were gonna go and kill themselves after their diagnosis. I would take them home and I would let them see that you could lead a normal life. You get up, you go to work, you could have a family, you could live with this. And it wasn't the end of the world. Juan David was about 12, 11 or 12 years old and we were in the car one day and he told me he said mom they were telling us about and they came to our school and they educated us about hiv and aids and how you could get it with needles and then it was the long pause and he asked me do you have hiv and i said yes 
and then he was silent he teared up a little bit and then we started I started educating him mommy's okay she's gonna live a long time she's very healthy she takes care of herself don't worry and uh, that was huge that year was very difficult for him um, he went through a lot of transitions uh, he was basically the man of the house for a long time and he had the HIV, a mom with HIV to deal with. At the time I met my husband, so, um, and his schoolwork was not so well and his attitude wasn't so well. Um, fortunately he grew out of that and um, I moved on with my life.